Hey there guys, it's Joey and this video is going to be announcing the new series that I'm going to be engaging in now that I have finished engaging with the Ogum. I'm going to be carrying on with the Ogum in my own private way and there will be some divinational stuff going on and I'm going to talk about that in an update video in a day or two. But for this video I wanted to talk about the the progress of where I'm going next, which is to use the Oracle cards Witchlings by Paulina Cassidy. I decided to engage with these one a week like I was the Yogam. And Oracle cards are different from Tarot. The Tarot have a very specific layout. You have your major and your minor and they are all more or less always exactly the same. Sometimes people tweak them a little bit as in sometimes you know you get your pages get get turned into daughters for example in the wild unknown tarot so oracles are a little bit more open to interpretation a little bit freer a little bit more generalized and they can come in all sorts of messages but the basis of it is, is it's usually cards and there are so many of them. I don't think there's a set number for oracle cards. I'm pretty sure there's not. And they are intuitive wisdom. They're a smaller message, perhaps, they're perhaps not as in-depth, perhaps, as tarot. About tarot, I was requested to carry on with the Wild Unknown comparisons and discussing my interpretations of them, and I will be doing that that's coming up. I'm a little bit behind now because I've had teeth problems again so. But for my personal engaging with Oracle, which is what this is going to be, the new series is, is basically Oracle Wisdom and I'm going to shuffle the deck privately and, and connect with the energies privately and pull a card each week and that card will be the basis for that week. So I'm going to take that message, I'm going to read to you from the book and this is the little book that comes with it. I'm going to try not to read too much of the little book of spells that comes with it because they do actually come with, I think it's a spell each, I'm trying to look without reading too. It's three different ideas of um, ways of doing spell work of some kind. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to engage with the card by myself, read the little meaning, write the little meaning down like I would for the Ogham, and we're going to talk about it in the introduction video. And then I'm going to go away and document how I felt those energies have come into the week. I'll probably have the card on my, on my seasonal altar, I guess you can call it, the more open and working altar, I guess. And I'm going to see how those energies tie in to my week. And I will come up with a spell the same way I have been for the Ogham to sort of share an idea with everybody. Like, this is how you could set up a spell for this theme. The spell work that I'm showing you aren't necessarily going to be spells that I would have done, although I probably will do them all as I'm working through my, my spell work, but it's basically showing you the bare bones of something about how you could set up a spell for this theme if you so wished. And I really, really enjoyed the Ogham particularly. I think the Ogham have really helped me in terms of connecting with energies and paying attention to what's going on around me and writing down lessons and things and helping me grow on my spiritual path. So I thought seeing as I had been so drawn to this oracle set, which is, I th it's the first oracle set I've had in a long, long time. And I love the artwork by Paulina Cassidy and I'm not going to go into it all because there's a whole review of this oracle deck. So already on the channel. So the card I actually picked this week, ironically enough, is inspiration. <laughs> so beforehand I shuffled the deck and 
connected with the energies and cut the deck and this is what was pulled out. Now on this card it says inspiration an inspired mind is willing to reach beyond limitations. Okay, I'm going to read to you what the little bit on the oracle card says in the book. Uh, Zinaya finds her inspiration in the most unlikely of places. It's always there around her, no matter which way she faces. We all find ourselves stuck in a rut from time to time. The question is, how do you get yourself unstuck? The answer is that it's all about changing perspective. An inspired mind is willing to reach beyond limitations. Inspiration will trigger consciousness to expand until the world looks somehow different perhaps brighter and more intriguing. Inspiration comes from within, resulting from excitement about something. Your attitude towards any situation will affect inspiration, which comes hand in hand with motivation. However, the surest way of obtaining inspiration is to avoid putting pressure on yourself to find it. Once receptive to inspiration, it will come to you naturally. Relax, let go of any tensions, Break away from the usual and take chances. A zest of inspiration can be found anywhere, at any time, and in anything. And then it goes on to the spell work within the book. So, I think it could be a really interesting thing to see if, the, if engaging with these cards is going to help further the path in the energies that they bring to it. So this card is a lovely card. Um, all the Witchling cards are beautiful. I love the Witchlings. I think they are cute, but the right side are cute. They're not like uh, so sugary sweet that they're just a bit too icky. There's still something a, a little bit... They are whimsy, but uh, there's still that, that naughty witchness. Do you know what I mean? That naughty energy flowing through them. So let's move the rest of the pack out of the way for the time being and we'll see if we can zoom in just a tiny little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. Just so you can see. The owls are actually present on all of the cards but uh, quite frequently where they are and what they're doing can tie into the, the idea of the whole of the card so it's sort of flying and looking forward and, and moving forward so the witch herself is on her broom and she's looking very sultry <laughs> I think she looks very sultry is it me I love the design I love the hat I love the stripy tights and the witchy shoes and the ang you know the angle of the legs it's almost reminiscent of the hanged man the legs which is interesting because the hanged man can often be about hang hanging about literally as in going inward to yourself for inspiration to reassess a situation so the fact that she has that pose almost with her legs because if you flipped her upside down it might be very similar to that so it's, it's sort of taking that energy and then putting it to use in this card. The broom, of course, is going to be present in possibly all of the Witchling cards. I'm just going to have a quick look through, see if... Oh, it's not in all of them. It's in some of... It's going to be in quite a few because uh, the broom is sort of synonymous with uh, witchcraft these days. And, you know... The idea of a witch in flight is often in the modern psyche, in symbolism and perhaps in stereotype, shown as being on a broom. And there's a lot of talk about that coming from the whole astral, um, astral oils and things, you know, that they would anoint themselves with to seek higher truths. And so that idea sort of somehow came into the whole broom and the actual flying thing. 
Brooms mainly being used nowadays to to sweep energy. It's quite a lot of um, modern witches actually use their brooms in energy work to literally sweep out negativity because they were tying that to a household item. And it's interesting that that comes up this week after we had spinning last week with the ogum. That you know that we have to reassess items which sometimes don't look magical on first basis and that was true last week with the spinning it was true with the granite last week and then we can bring that into this week with the broom you know i have a little broom like a mini broom cinnamon broom that i use on my altars to like physically clean them but also to energetically if you like cleanse those negative any energies hanging around on a light day-to-day -day basis I love the hat as well. I think a hat's awesome. I guess the hat is is a real um, focal point for this image, and for me that's because often the witch's hat is associated with the cone of power, and it's also create. If you think about it, it, it can be the cone of power is in the creative, imaginative, ins inspirational process within your mind. In the book, it talked about the fact that inspiration is something that you react to from you know, messages from the divine perhaps, or something like that. So if that large hat is then symbolic of our connecting to energies, to the deity, to inspirational energies coming from the world around us, and it makes sense that the hat is such a giant part and parcel of this image. And there's a lot coming off it. There is, you know, what appears to be flowers and charms and the moon on the end just to all different places where energies could come from so overall it's a beautiful card there are a lot of charms on this actually there are charms and ribbons on the broom itself there are charms and things on her hat and then she appears to have a charm type necklace around her midriff so that's interesting as well maybe charms will come up this week as helping with inspiration so that's going to be it for this video and i hope you like the idea i'm thrilled to be carrying it on and carrying on documenting and carry on uh, almost it's almost a witchy vlog a witchy walk through like how to engage with different ideas to try and help you aid you you don't have to have aids like this but i like having them i think it, it helps it might just be me so that's it for this week for the connecting video and we shall carry on many blessings